You know, there's just something about small phones that I really like. It probably stems from the fact that pretty much every phone made nowadays has a five to six inch display. So when a small phone comes around, it feels tiny and comfortable in my hands. And that's how I feel about this little guy, the iPhone SE. As of the date of this video was uploaded, it's the smallest iPhone that Apple has made that still runs the latest software, iOS 13. But it's a four year old phone now. So is it even worth owning in 2020? Let's talk about that. From a design standpoint, this is one of my favorite phones that Apple has ever made. There's nothing really overtly special about it. It doesn't really stand out. It just has some character that I like. It's got chamfered edges. It's got those round clicky buttons and no camera bump. Just an overall clean design all the way around. The front of the phone is pretty terrible by 2020 standards with that huge forehead and chin, but it's got a fingerprint reader and a headphone jack, two things that have disappeared from modern iPhones. It's just a tiny, clean, minimalist looking iPhone. There have been some rumors circulating about a second version to this phone, but I believe those have been squashed in favor of the iPhone 9, which is basically just a re-release of the iPhone 8 with newer hardware, and that's honestly just a bummer. On the inside of the SE, there's not much to talk about. The SE is basically a 6S that's been squeezed into the body of a 5S. It's got the Apple A9, two gigs of RAM, up to 128 gigs of storage, and the same 12 megapixel rear-facing camera from the 6S. That's where the similarities end, though. The SE has a smaller four inch display compared to the 4.7 on the 6S. It has a terrible 1.2 megapixel front facing camera, no 3D touch, a lower than 720p display, and a slightly smaller battery. That last point isn't really a point of contention though because the SE has a slightly better battery life overall than the 6S did, probably due to that smaller lower res screen. <laughs> The screen isn't terrible, by the way. It, it has decent colors and it's so small that you don't notice the lack of sharpness. It just sounds terrible to have a 640 by 1136 display in 2020. Performance isn't at a flagship level, but it hasn't turned to mush either. iPhones tend to be pretty good speed-wise throughout their life cycle. And yeah, the SE is really no different. Swiping left, right, dragging up and down are all pretty snappy, no issues there. Opening some apps can take a little more time than I'm used to though. If I take into consideration the age of this phone and then just let the slightly slower speed go, the only real thing that I have to complain about is the touch ID speed. It's the first generation touch sensor, so it feels really, really slow, even slower than the first gen under the display fingerprint readers. It's not a huge deal, but it can be annoying if you've gotten used to how fast face ID or modern fingerprint readers are. The rear camera is fine. It's 12 megapixels and it can shoot up to 4K 30, so it can be decent for most things. It just won't have the dynamic range or sharpness on some of the newer phones on the market. The front facing camera is just atrocious though. There's literally nothing to like about it unless you're really self-conscious and you don't like seeing any detail in your face. In that way, it's great. So why do I own this now in 2020? Well, this phone is actually gonna become my main iPhone for this year. I'm not getting rid of my 11, but I won't be using it much either. I'm gonna be testing and reviewing a lot of other phones this year, like the upcoming Samsung S20 and the other Android phones, but I still want iMessage and use of my Series 5 Apple Watch, so I'll be keeping my SE in my other pocket while my SIM card is staying in those other phones. Having two phones is kind of overkill when you think about it, but this phone is so tiny and it's running the latest OS, so it's no trouble whatsoever to carry this around too. Do I think this use case is going to be common for a lot of you? No, of course not. But there are a lot of other reasons why I'd recommend this phone in 2020. First of all, it's cheap, like really cheap. I bought this phone on Kijiji for about 70 bucks and they go for that price or cheaper all the time. It's one of the cheapest iPhones on the market that still runs the latest OS. That said though, do be warned. I'm actually expecting Apple to drop support for the SE 6 and 6S either in iOS 14 or iOS 15 next year. The Apple A9 is an aging chip and they could drop support for devices using it as early as late this year. It has a headphone jack though, and that makes it a great device to keep around for music and podcasts, even if it does lose support eventually. So bottom line, let me give it to you straight here. Is the iPhone SE the perfect tiny phone? Nope. Definitely not, but with the charming design, decent battery life, headphone jack, and a super low price, I like it a lot, and I wouldn't fault anyone for still rocking it in 2020. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to support my content, and as always, have a great day.